Good afternoon to you who are joining us on the internet and on Facebook. Welcome to the Church of the Immaculate Conception, the Franciscan Church in Marchansky, Dublin. On this Sunday, I invite you to join me and we pray the Angelus together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. She is come unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth the beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel. May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no care could destroy, be there at our waking and give us, we pray, your bliss in our hearts, Lord. At the break of the day, Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray. Your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome especially to all who are joining in this act of worship by means of the internet. Today is the fourth Sunday in what is called ordinary time, but we live at an extraordinary time, worshipping scattered, but being able to be united in this means, so that together we can offer praise and thanksgiving to our God. We gather hearing of the approval of a Jesus who spoke with authority and who showed that authority in the way he acted. As we come together, we ask that the mercy of God made manifest in Jesus may touch our lives too, so that we in turn may touch others with the kindness of God's love. And acknowledging that we're sinners and that we fail, 
we turn to God who is merciful, naming our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, yours is a teaching that is new with authority behind it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have the word of eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us in word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Moses was the great prophetic leader who brought the people out of slavery in Egypt and is the figure that Jesus' contemporaries still sought, the fulfillment of the promise we hear in the first reading. Jesus, however, is the new Moses, teaching with authority and confirming that by his acts. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself, from among yourselves, from your own brothers. To him you must listen. This is what you yourselves asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. Do not let me hear again, you said, the voice of the Lord my God, nor look any longer on this great fire, or I shall die. And the Lord said to me, All they have spoken is well said. I will raise up a prophet like, myself, like yourself for them from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all I command him. The man who does not listen to my words, that he speaks in my name, shall be held answerable to me for it. But the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not 
your heart Oh, that today you would listen to his voice Harden not your heart Come ring out our joy to the Lord Hail the rock who saves us Let us come before him giving thanks With songs let us hail the Lord Oh, that today you would listen to his voice Harden not your heart Come in, let us kneel and bend low let us kneel before the God who made us For He is our God And we the people who belong to His pasture The flock that is led by His hand Oh, that today you would listen to His voice Harden not your heart Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test. When they tried me, though they saw my word. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry, an unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is torn two ways. In the same way, an unmarried man, woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you, not to put a halter around your necks, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be, and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alle, allelu, alleluia, alle, allelu, alleluia, alle, allelu, alleluia, alle, allelu, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alle, allelu, alleluia. Alle, allelu, alleluia. Alle, allelu, alleluia. Alle, allelu. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their synagogue just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and it shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished they, that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits, and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread, through, spread everywhere through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. I would like to see you free from all worry. The purpose that St. Paul sets down as he begins to give advice to the Corinthians is something we'd all like for ourselves at this time. How good it would be if we had nothing to worry us. No pandemic, no restrictions, no loss of jobs, no houses under threat, no concerns about vaccines or borders or political alignments or violence on our streets. But we don't live in an ideal world, and we have to negotiate with all that worries us. And the antidote to worry is not being carefree, but being faith-based leading lives that are grounded in faith. In the synagogue, those present were astonished by Jesus. He taught with authority. He acted with authority. Unclean spirits were silenced and driven out. It's easy for us to imagine that if only we'd been there, we would have had everything sorted. We'd know the right path to take. Nothing would disturb us or worry us. But the amazement and the admiration of the people does not last. Some of the very people who were astonished by Jesus' powerful deeds will attribute his power to the devil. Others will claim that he's out of his mind. And the reason why we listen to the gospel Sunday after Sunday and place the gospel passage in the context of the scriptures is that astonishment has to yield to something quite different if true faith is to take root. On one occasion, when the people walked away from him, Jesus turned to Peter and the others and asked, were they going to walk off also? Whom would we go to? Peter replies. You have the word of life, and we believe. We know that you are the Holy One of God. That Knowing, based on faith, is what has to replace astonishment or amazement 
or even dismay if we are to answer the call to follow Jesus and be disciples. Now for the Jews, Moses was the teacher beyond all others. And we hear in the first reading how they begged God that Moses would act as intermediary between them and God. God grants what they ask, but there's the promise there that he would raise up for them a prophet like Moses from among their kin and put the words of God into his mouth. The Gospels show how slow the people were to recognize that Jesus was the one like Moses. But the unclean spirits are quick to recognize his authority and draw that firmness forth in Jesus. Quiet, come out of him. He silences them and they obey. His authority is real and immediate, but their opposition would cut through that slow growth that faith needs. For the disciples, Jesus is the new Moses. He is, as Peter put it so clearly, the Holy One of God. And it's to the voice of Jesus we listen when we seek to learn the truth. It's the Holy Spirit given by Jesus that will lead us into all the truth. But when we do that and seek that, beware of a strident type of discipleship. Stridents of any type sharpen, shares the tone of the unclean spirits. It divides. It wants to separate the worthy from the unworthy. It wants to dismiss anyone not sharing its viewpoint. Harsh, strident tones dominate whole areas in our time. We've had world leaders who have been insulting, ridiculing, demeaning others that did not agree with them. Look at what happens on social media where comments are abusive and divisive. And in our own country, we find those who simply dismiss the pandemic as fake news. And in these circumstances, what does Jesus teach us? Quite the contrary. Courtesy, graciousness, respect. He uses his authority to silence the evil spirits, but he shows respect to the one who is freed from a malignant influence. Not only in the synagogue described today, but remember that occasion when the woman was taken in adultery and shamed publicly, and his gentleness with her. And think of Peter, Peter who can recognize Jesus as the Holy One of God. But when Jesus has been erected, arrested, and when it appears that Jesus' authority and power has been taken away from him, Peter denies. It takes the resurrection for Peter to know the truth about the kind of authority that Jesus has. And from that moment on, Peter does not worry. He acts towards the Lord and towards others out of love. And that is the Christian program. Not to be worried by the myriad manifestations of evil in our world, but to love God with all our heart and our neighbor as ourselves. To do good to those who slight us. To bind up the brokenhearted. To speak the truth with humility gently but firmly, to be instruments 
of peace in our divided world. We turn now, and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to the Father, the creator of all that is, we bring to mind all who are in need in any way. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. May he continue to inspire all who believe in the gospel to live it by serving the, those on the margins of society and by protecting our common home. Lord, hear us. Lord, pray. May the Holy Spirit empower us with the gift of discernment so that when faced with life's choices, we will choose what is good and resist what is evil. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for Dermot, our Archbishop-elect, who will be installed on Tuesday. Lord, pour out on him the spirit of truth that he may guide the church in our diocese and invite those who are weak to share in the light of faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, Father, bring healing to all who are suffering, those in hospital, those at home, those who are carers, and those who are family. Lord, hear us. Lord, and for all who have died, and I invite you to pause for a moment to think of the beloved dead of your own family. We pray also for Connor Geeran, who was buried from this church yesterday, and for Michael Gildee, brother of Father Sean, whose funeral takes place today in County Sligo. May they be granted eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, We pray also for our benefactors, living and dead, for whom this Mass is offered. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. Heavenly God, you are the rock who saves us, and with joy we kneel before your throne, confident of your protection, through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God. For our goodness and God's holiness. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim... rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith He is 
Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and our Bishop Dearman and Dermot and all who minister to your church and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned to your voice in your compassion O merciful Father gather to yourself all your children scattered our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passage from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. In Thee, O Lord, I place my trust. In Thee, O Lord, I place my trust. In Thee, O Lord, I place. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer for protection to Our Lady. O Mary, our Mother, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Lady of Knock, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. 
He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despi do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. We thank you for joining with us this morning in this celebration. May the Lord bless you all. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go now in the peace and the joy of Christ. <laughs>